On the Caribbean island of Cuba on January the 1st, 1959, the government of Fulgencio Batista was overthrown in a revolution led by Fidel Castro, who would go on to rule Cuba from 1959 to 2008. Before looking at the revolution, we should briefly consider the events leading up to it. After the Spanish-American War, Cuba passed from Spanish to American control in 1899, and two years later, Cuba had its independence, but under the conditions of the Platt Amendment, it was closely tied to the USA economically, politically, and militarily. After a succession of weak and corrupt presidencies, General Gerardo Machado became Cuba's first de facto dictator in 1925. A reign of terror then began until August 1933, when he was forced to flee after economic stagnation and domestic turmoil. In the years that followed, Fulgencio Batista Izalvida, a military man, dominated Cuban politics and became president himself from 1940 to 1944, but fled after his candidate lost the election later in 1944. In 1952, he returned with his own candidacy, but realizing he would lose, he staged a coup then made himself president in an unopposed election. Again, there was domestic strife and economic stagnation, and opposition to Bautista grew, partly in the form of the 26th of July movement under revolutionary leader Fidel Castro. In 1953, Castro had led 160 men in an attack on an army barracks hoping to inspire an uprising, but the attack failed and after a two-year prison term, Castro went to Mexico to organize exiled Cubans into an invasion force. Aboard the yacht Granma, Castro landed in eastern Cuba on December 2nd, 1956 with 86 men, including Che Guevara. They took to the Sierra Mastra mountains and began a guerrilla campaign. Over the next year, a series of insurrections took place around Cuba, involving the students, trade unionists, and rebel military officers. Bautista responded by cracking down on civil liberties and suspending the June 1958 presidential election. He started a military campaign against Castro's forces in the mountains, but was forced back by fierce resistance. In November 1958, presidential elections finally took place but it became apparent that there had been electoral fraud as Rivero Aguero, Bautista's anointed successor, was declared victor. After this, popular support for Bautista declined, and although the army remained loyal, they were handicapped by an arms embargo from the US. Meanwhile, Castro's forces were getting better weaponry from foreign sources and could now take on the government army in open battle. On December the 27th, 1958, a rebel force under Che Guevara routed the garrison in Santa Clara and captured an armed train filled with arms and ammunitions that were desperately needed by government forces. Four days later, on January the 1st, 1959, Bautista stood down and fled the country. Soon, the rebel forces marched into Havana and a new provisional government was established with Manuel Uratia Leo as president and Castro as prime minister. Under the guise of resisting foreign imperialism, Castro forced Uritia to resign and consolidated power as leader of Cuba. The communist government set up by Castro in 1959 still rules to this day, despite all that has been thrown at it, such as the invasion at the Bay of Pigs and numerous assassination attempts. Castro died in 2016 and was replaced by his brother Raul, a fellow revolutionary. Thanks for watching this four minute history on the Cuban revolution. And please look in the description below for books and movies you should check out for more detailed and nuanced look at all things associated with this period in Cuba's history. If you found that interesting, you may be interested in other four minute histories on an array of topics throughout human history. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon.